Hi guys, it's Debbie with Debbie J's Crafting Corner and today I'm going to be playing with a 3D embossing folder from Spellbinders. If you saw any of my videos, the, the live streams that I did back at Creativation, way back in March or April I think it was, you saw that they were coming out with these 3D embossing folders and I've only got a couple so far. This is one of them. This is just so, so, so lovely. This is called the Holiday Floral Swag. So this is a huge, huge one. This one actually measures... Wow, that's nine inches. Five and a half by nine inches. So you can put a full half sheet of cardstock in here and get a humongous card, or you can trim off part of it um, to make your card that way too. And you can decide what you want to keep and what you don't. You could actually make two cards using different pieces of this. So I'm going to go ahead and just play a little bit. I'm not sure exactly what I want to do, but I'm going to be using my platinum six and the new platform of the new i forgot what it's called my brain is stopped again sorry guys anyway it is the new platform that is for spellbinders it's got basically multiple pieces so that it will work with one of the 3d embossing folders so usually with a regular embossing folder you would use the full thickness and this is the full thickness of my regular standard one but they decided to cut off a bit from the top so that it would accommodate the 3d embossing folder so this is so cool and they do give you instructions on everything in here as to what the sandwich is supposed to be so right here it has how to build a 3d embossing folder sandwich so we need the adapter plate which i do have over here i uh, will grab that that's this gray plate you need your base, which this is the platform base, and then you need your embossing folder with cardstock. So we've got that. So I am in kind of the mood for foil. You know me, I love my foil. So what I'm going to try out first is this is just some foil cardstock from, um, from Michaels, and I think I want it to have the raised piece be the part that's on the shiny side. So I'm just going to go ahead and slip that in there. And pull it back a little bit from the edge, I think. Just because the fold is grabbing it kind of tight. Don't think it really, really matters all that much, but... Okay. Okay, and this is not quite the six inches, and that's perfectly... I think that was six inches, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> anyway, that was a five and a half inch wide. So that's what I'm going to use. And you can see how pretty that design is going to look on there. So now I'm going to put the adapter plate over the top. Make sure that everything is on my platform. That's one reason why you need to use these big platforms is because of how long the embossing folders are. Shorter embossing folders, no big deal. These big ones, you do need to do this. Okay, so now I'm going to just crank that on through. And you can usually feel it when it gets to the end. Yep, there we go. I'm going to run it back. Okay. That's just basically giving it a little extra pressure, a double dose of that pressure to see how that is going to affect it. Okay. Now, again, I have not used this embossing folder yet. I've been holding it off to the side until I could share it with you guys. So let's take a, oh, let's take a look at that. That is just gorgeous. Oh my goodness. Uh, I don't know what I want to do with this. Oh my God, that is just too pretty. Okay, now I need to figure out what I'm going to do with it. Okay, so I had to think about that a little bit. And what I've decided is that I want to... I'm going to try to just do that bow by itself in some red foil cardstock. So that is... A little over two inches. I'm going to cut off like two and a half from a piece of red foil cardstock. Again, this is just some stuff I've got from Michaels. I bought a bunch of it when they were on sale, <laughs> pretty much every time they went on sale. And now I'm going to run it through with that embossing folder, but I'm going to use the embossing folder on just that one small section. I'd even put the thing away because I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. So I'm going to do it right here. Meaning you don't have to use a full in the full sheets for your embossing with any embossing folders. And you can see it is covering pretty much that entire bow. 
Okay, so I think I'm going to just add it to that end. Actually, it's smarter to do it with the folded end first. That way you get a good, good impression. Okay. Um, let's just run that through and see what happens. Okay. Okay. So let's take a look. And yes, that is still just so pretty. So I'm going to fussy cut out this little bow here. So I've got my Fisker scissors. I've also got my other Fisker scissors uh, that are hiding. So I can cut off the larger bits. So the bow is here and then it's got that bit that comes around. And I want to try to hold on to all of that. So yes, I'm going to cut off these pretty holly leaves that are in red. Okay. So starting off with that, and I'm going to just try to fussy cut right up along the edge of my little bow. Okay, so I'm thinking this is what I'm going to use. Let's take a look. That I think is going to be pretty. Now you could cut out these bits in the center there. I think I'm going to leave them alone because, yeah, that's, I'm not that good with a craft knife. If you're good with a craft knife, go for it. But I haven't really used a craft knife all that much. And this is pretty enough that I don't want to mess it up any further. So I'm going to put this pretty red bow onto my green with some foam tape. Um, I think that'll give it just a little bit of dimension. I think that'll be very, very pretty. And I'm going to just cut off some little bits and position those on there. You guys are going to have to tell me if you like watching me when I'm doing my experimenting, because this is very much an experimentation one. This is just so... It, I'll be honest with you, while I was cutting, it it felt weird, <laughs> okay? It felt weird because this is so shiny. It looks, it looks like metal. It doesn't feel like metal. It's not like the mirror card stock, but just trying cutting it and having it cut so easily um, when it almost feels like you should, it looks like you should be having more trouble with cutting it than you actually are because, you know, it looks like metal. Okay, so I'm going to put that little, put the bow there, right over the top of the other one, right over the top of the green. And you could do this with regular cardstock, it does not have to be any kind of foil, but oh my goodness, this foil look, I love the way that this is looking. And you guys really can't see it the way that I'm seeing it. it. It has a lot more of a vibrant color than what you're seeing there, just because the way that the camera is seeing um, the reflection compared to where my eyes are, because we're not in the exact same spot. You know how that goes. Okay, let me grab my tweezers so I can get this position just where I want it. Okay, so we're going to layer it up right over the other image. Okay, and then I'm going to add some Nouveau Drops. These are in Autumn Red, I think. Um, yes, Autumn Red. And I'm going to basically go over all these little places that have got a little red, or would be, red berry. So I'm going to be adding quite a bit of this on there, and I don't really have to put it too heavy. So it doesn't have to be domed because we've already got that dome right there. But I thought this would be a fun way to add a bit more color. And then once everything is dried, then I can cut it all down and decide exactly how I want to put it on my card base. We've also got some little flowers here that I am going to say are going to be red flowers. They might be supposed to be a different color, but you know what? I don't care.
Okay. So now we've got all of our berries added on there. Oh, wow. That looks just so pretty. Okay, I'm going to set this to dry for a bit, and then I'll come back and put together a card. Okay, so now I need to be <laughs> very careful. Um, I love the way that this looks. I'm just not 100% sure what parts I want to use. I do know I want to use this part here. So I'm going to trim off the excess because this was bigger than my, em my embossing folder was. And I'm going to try to just hold the paper down with my hand instead of using the finger guard too much because the finger guard is going to smush my pretty ribbon. Okay, so we've got that side done. So this part is definitely going on a card. So now I've got it right now at five and a half. And the length is eight and a half. So I could cut this down to four and a quarter. So let's see what that would look like if I did that. If I cut it down to four and a quarter. Oh my God, both of them are gorgeous. I'm going to go with it. So this is going to be a twofer. So I'm cutting it down to four and a quarter. And this is going to actually go all the way to the edge so I don't have to lose any of that pretty prettiness. Yes, I'm going to say that those are words. Okay. Need a couple of card bases. And then I'll need a couple of sentiments. I do have a sentiment ready. So I went ahead and found one in my stash. I've actually got two of the same. So let's see what this looks like on both of these. See what I think. So can have I still like the ribbon across the bottom so that's what I think I'm gonna go with and then we can have our Merry Christmas across the top there I think that will be lovely basically taking up the rest of that space and then if we want to do this one this one can go in basically any kind of a direction and I could do the same kind of thing with the, the sentiments. So I that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and put together another set of these. Now this is from an, ephemera, from an ephemera pack. I think this was part of the... It was one of the more recent ones from, from Spellbinder. So I'm going to look at those two kits. Um, I'm not 100% sure on the name, but I will put the name of both of the recent Christmas kits down in the description for you guys and I should be able to figure out which one this came with um and anyway I'm gonna do I have one more set of these you can use any kind of Merry Christmas sentiment and it would perfect but I'm gonna go ahead and do that and add some foam to the back of that so it looks like these are from the die cut sentiments from the oh what fun collection that was out I believe it was last month and it should still be out so I will look that one up for you. There are some of the collections that, you know, once they're out and once they sell out, they're gone, at least until they have a chance to do a re-release, which may not be for months. But I believe that this one should still be on the website. So I'll be sure to leave a link down below for you guys in case you're interested because these sentiments are perfect. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and add this on to my first panel here. I'm going to have the Christmas touching the bow because I want to make sure I've got enough room. And off to the side. And try to have that one pretty much straight. Looks good. Okay. And then do the same thing with my Mary. And think, let me make sure that that's not crooked. Okay, my Mary is just a little bit crooked, so let me raise one edge of it so it's not quite, quite as wonky. Okay, so that looks good. So that is going to finish up that panel. All I need to do is mount that onto a card base and then trim down the card base to match. Sometimes card bases don't actually match your paper as well as you would like. So that is fine though. And I think I think I'm gonna mount this on some foam tape as well. So for this guy, I think I want to make this one a vertical card. And I think I'm gonna have the foliage coming down from the top. I think that looks pretty. 
And then we're just going to put a Merry Christmas kind of across the front. I think I want it up here so we can see more of the berries. Does that look good? Yeah, that looks great. So I'm going to go ahead and put the Christmas on first and then add the Merry afterwards. Okay, and then I just need to add some foam tape to the back of both of those so that I can put them on their card panels. Okay, so I need to make sure that I've got it facing the right direction. So I've got the top down to the bottom and top down to the bottom on here because it'll be, it's possible to trim the other ends if you need to. Okay, and then line it up with the left side and the bottom, pressing it down. There we go. And then I can trim the edges to make sure everything is perfect. Do the same thing with this. I'm also trying to be fairly careful with the front because I don't want to damage too much of that pretty foil. Okay, so I'm going to do the same kind of thing with this one. So this is the side where the card opens. So that's the side I need to have down at the bottom. And then I'll just place my card right along the edge there and along the edge on the side and it should go down pretty straight and then I can just trim the edges a little bit with my paper trimmer. Okay, just to make sure everything is still pretty much square. Okay, so I'm pushing the end up against the edge there and then just gonna do a quick trim. And this is just trimming off a little bit of that white. I think I need a little bit more there. There we go. And just double checking each of the sides to make sure that everything is pretty much square. Okay, so that one is gorgeous and all done. Now I just need to finish up this one and our cards are done. Okay, this side looks good. Uh, this one's just off just a tiny, tiny bit. There we go. So that is going to finish up these two lovely cards that I made using that fantastic embossing folder that is off to the side here. Here we go. So this one is the Holiday Floral Swag 3D Embossing Folder. And I think these are just gorgeous and so, so easy to do. Oh my goodness. Okay. Anyway, you guys have a wonderful day. Be sure to check out this playlist to see some more projects where I'm using some Spellbinders products. And I will talk to you soon. Remember, if I can make it, you can too. Bye guys.